Yeah, thank you for the sub, Pico. Why do you want to throw me out of a window? What do you do when you find yourself staring into a space? Empty, yet terrifying. It's a phenomenon that's gained widespread attention in the past couple years due to the nature of our ever-evolving world. Things are changing, closing, being forgotten, and in their wake are derelict spaces that so evoke a nostalgic Zara's, comfort, Why he yet this? our brains seem to strangely reject them. We feel like we've been there. We associate memories with images that we've never before seen, and for some reason, we become stuck in this trance of eerie fascination. Y'all never been to Toys R Us, bro? This sensation oh is caused by God. liminality, a term deriving from the word liminal, I'm getting meaning old. something that's occupying a position been. at, or on both sides of, a boundary or threshold. Something that is within transition. With widespread interest catalyzed by subreddits, forums, and social media, the internet has served as a vehicle for sharing pictures of liminal spaces with others. This has effectively paved the path for various forms of media and online storytelling to capitalize on it, resulting in a myriad of personal stories, creepypastas, and indie games to play on the uncanniness that comes with them. Yo, them trips to the toy Contrary to this the guy, recent support, rise in online be. popularity, though, Bye, uh, liminal spaces are nothing new. Picking up all in types fact, of wrestling, man. the Stop concept playing, of liminality man. has always existed among us. We've just never really noticed it. Oh, I know game chat. Ohio. Los Angeles. What is it about source maps that unnerve us? Is it the feeling of loneliness? The emptiness that comes with the very purpose of a landscape? San Andreas. Or is it perhaps the fact that we can hear the sounds of other humans carrying their lives in the distance? Yet, in our eyes, we're the only ones here. It's a funny feeling that a feeling of confusion Anticipation well, I'm not gonna lie, bro. as we await people it's triggering me. Come. I'm just coming, I'm just saying whatever comes Contrary to my first to the thought, evidence Windows around us. Buildings, furniture within a cozy apartment, beer in the fridge, nobody ever will. Venom. Throughout the late 90s and into the 2000s, video games were playing on the trope of liminal spaces without even knowing it. Gary's Mod and Silent Hill are two that come to mind immediately. And while Gmod was oh more of an accidental God. case, Silent Hill was a bit more on the nose. Sumo, Everything you, about it is it's interwoven with the very fabric thing. of what makes liminal spaces so creepy to us. Isolation Hill, is always the that. forefront, with the player being left to explore a town that is years past its time. Hospitals, foggy streets, a theme park, a subway system, and even an apartment that you're unable to leave. Every single game is stuck in a bizarre state of transition. Oh, this game will be fine. Yo, I would sure lose my mind. I would lose my mind alone. playing. I got played up. That's on the list. Let's go. He just put me on. No Players Online is a 2019 a indie horror okay, game okay, that bet. takes this notion and cranks it up to 10. Everything about it is liminal. We is expect this? the game to be littered with other players. We have the overwhelming sentiment that the space we're currently exploring was, at one time, the home to thousands of multiplayer matches. Yet, we're alone. No players are online, but us. No. -uh. And I think this is where most of the lingering dread of a liminal space stems from. The anticipation 
the expectation that someone else should be around, as is life, yet there isn't. It's the foundational rejection of loneliness that's hardwired into our brains, and when this loneliness is portrayed through art and even photos of reality, that is where the uncanniness sets in. That shit just creep me out. Might just load up on an O2K server, fuck it. You know, autophobia is something inexplicably and terrifyingly unique, and you never really know it until you're in it. At school after hours, at a hotel pool when no one's around, the very last one in a shopping mall. There are so many cases for situations like this. Oh my and the beauty God. of the internet Yo, is that we're able to share pictures and stories of spaces that Target, terrify Walmart us. Walmart is just some sick ass together. Dogs. Like it's nothing to do. Whether it's through gaming or reality, I don't know why liminal spaces so and their much. play on our natural fear of loneliness are terrifying. And regardless if we ever figure out why they're so eerie, it's irrefutable that they'll always persist in the dark depths of the internet. There's something of a reminder. A yeah, memento, a lens I think into a world bro. that is and will Too always much. be. Y'all got locked in a mall before, like alone, fading. Fuck no. An ever so distant memory. A school, yeah, not a mall. How the fuck you get locked in a school? <laughs> Dumbass nigga, leave. It's late at night. You cozy up in your room watching creepy YouTube videos. There are seemingly endless, but there is one channel that I'd like to highlight tonight. It's called Floricita Dreams, and at first glance of their channel, we can notice the absurdity with their thumbnails. Their content is just as cryptic and heavily resembles Ladies various ARGs that we've encountered in videos past. It's in Spanish, but that doesn't discount how strange it is. At the end of the day though, you might be wondering, why are we talking about this tonight? In the midst of scouring for topics to cover, I was sent an email by a person named Joshua. A link to this channel and their explanation of it states the following. Thank you for the follow, Rixion. And sexy After Spanish cartoons talk. broadcasted in Mexico, there used to be a PSA showing missing people with their pictures and info on their last known whereabouts. One girl that showed up consistently was named Celine Delgado, and her only picture was of very poor quality, eerie, and her features were very vague. The actual video is in Spanish. But from what I understand, they suggest that she doesn't actually exist and was artificially made specifically to appear unsettling so people would better remember the broadcast. Interesting. The video in question was uploaded on September 2nd of this year Ew, and bitch. is titled Cinetica del Patron, Celine Delgado. Let's have a look. So ugly. Evento. Selene Delgado Selene Delgado es un patrón de rostros artificiales. Los rostros son construidos artificialmente y simulan ser caras humanas <laughs> para generar... What the fuck? <laughs> patrón de rostros artificiales. Yo, what the fuck was that? Los rostros son construidos artificialmente... Who the fuck is it? Who the fuck is it? Oh God, I swear to God though, I knew a fat nigga that looked just like this in like, when, when I used to go to school, bro, you, it always used to be a fat nigga that looked like this in school. Simulan ser caras humanas para generar emociones deseando generar estímulos super normales. It seems bizarre, Ew. but they're on to something. At the beginning of the video, Floresita seems to assert the hypothesis that the face of a woman uh, named Celine Delgado, quote, 
appreciate you. Genetically Adi. fits non-human AI-generated right. faces using the constant tau. Sorry. They go forth to explain the uncanny valley and how facial reconstructions cause uneasiness in those that encounter them. Following this, they superimpose various faces with the resulting images off to the right. And among these, Celine's face is shown mashed up with various others. They display a few examples that are, admittedly, eerie, and ultimately argue that the identity of this Celine Delgado is, as Joshua stated, artificial. Now, this is a lot to unpack, but considering that it's something that we haven't looked into prior, I found it worth considering. So, who is Celine Delgado, and how did she become wrapped up in this eerie shroud of urban legend? Throughout the 1990s, there was a TV segment run on Channel 5 in Mexico named Servicio de la Comunidad, or Channel 5 Community Service. As Joshua stated, it was a TV spot that ran between children's cartoons in hopes of spreading the word about various missing persons. The segments, contrary to what we're going to discuss later tonight, actually contain voiceovers giving various details and last locations of missing persons. And at first glance, the these mark. are mostly tame. When you really look into it though, the eerie nature of these TV spots stems from when you consider how Channel 5 handled the case of just one person, Celine Delgado. Over the years, her face would reportedly pop up in nearly every Servicio de la Comunidad segment, utilizing this exact same low quality photo. There were times where they give a bit of background info about her, like the fact that she went missing on April 22nd and was just 18 years old. Selena Delgado López, de 18 años, se extravió el 22 de abril en la delegación Álvaro Obregón. But what cemented her case into the minds of thousands of people came nearly 30 years later. Bruce said I'm opium. Thank you, bro. Time for lunch, lunch, lunch. Time for a lunch, crunch, crunch. Bingus, thank you for the get this up, Bingus. It goes without saying that the videos you're currently viewing are very obviously works of fiction. They were part of a stunt pulled by Channel 5 on their official Twitter page throughout 2019 and 2020. During this time, they were known to upload obscure, eerie videos to their account, only to delete them just hours later. It was an antic that ultimately catalyzed their rise to the Twitter trending page on numerous occasions and also drives home the point that this real world TV channel is not above messing with you. In the midst of these posts though, came one that involved a familiar name. This one. Posted after midnight on the 20th of February, 2020, we can clearly make out the name Selene Given that she was what many presumed to be an actual missing person that was constantly broadcasted on a kid's channel over the span of years, it gave birth to a new sort of urban legend that the Floresita Dreams channel was entertaining. The hypothesis that this person is potentially not real. The major argument stems from her missing photo. Many have stated online that it appears common, basic, and fake. This, combined with the lack of any online record that has ever been found about her, has led to a breeding ground of online hearsay, creepypastas, and hoax videos to command the conversation about her. Always doing this shit wild, like, what the fuck? Thought it was a Now, when I stumbled upon this video in my research, I, among many others, had initially assumed that this footage was real. Keeping in mind the other hoaxes and pranks that Channel 5 has played on its viewers, combined with the unconventional nature of these broadcasts being played on a kid's channel, I didn't doubt that they'd pull a prank like this to make her name stick with you. Ultimately though, as is the case with many works of media online, this too was a hoax. Mm. But. That doesn't discount the weirdness of this story. 
The way that Channel 5 has and is handling her name makes it seem like she's nothing but a tall tale. And unfortunately, given the nature of the internet, many have run with this notion. Regarding the real case of Celine Delgado, unfortunately nothing has ever come of it. Oh my god, fuck me. She has, as far as anyone knows, never been found, and her case has sat that way for decades. Personally, I think Celine Delgado, contrary to the rumors online, is indeed a real person. What? The argument presented about her having a fake face real? just doesn't seem plausible. Her image is low quality because it was the 90s. Her record likely did exist, but was never digitized. The uncanniness of this image would be exponentially higher if this actually were fake, and it just doesn't make sense for a channel to slip a random fake person in their broadcast that would most likely never have been noticed back then. To me, Celine Delgado was a real person. A real person with a story that likely never received any sort of closure. And a person that is now forever wrapped up Damn. in the realm of urban legend. That's fucked. But of course, that's just my conjecture. Celine Delgado is H2O Delirious. But my mic just hit my teeth. You better be dead ass. For real? I'm high as fuck. From the span of April 8th to April 9th, 2015, a devastating superstorm would wreak havoc on much of the central United States. 27 tornadoes ranging from EF0 to EF4 would touch down within the span of just 36 hours, resulting in immense devastation throughout Kansas, Missouri, Texas, Oklahoma, and Illinois. While most of them were rated as an EF1 or lower, by far the most destructive would impact a small rural town named Fairdale. Reaching wind speeds of up to 200 miles per hour, this 41-minute storm surge would ultimately become infamous as one of the worst natural disasters to impact the region in nearly 25 years. What does shit look like a Life is Strange episode? Five-year-old man named Clarence Schultz had just wrapped Midwest. up dinner with his wife Geraldine. Oh. He was in the other room getting cleaned up when she suddenly called him back into the kitchen. Look out the window, she claims. And when he does, Clarence would come face to face with a scene straight out of a nightmare. Immediately, Boy, he heads upstairs to here. grab supplies while she stays behind. And while up there, he pulls out his cell phone to take a quick video. What he was unaware of, though, was that while taking this footage, the tornado wasn't heading away, but rather right out. straight towards them. No shit. But that should look like it's getting closer.
PA dash shit. Clarence Schultz didn't make it back to his wife. Oh but shit. But thankfully, he did make it out of this oh. alive. Oh man. Geraldine, however, wasn't quite so lucky. Man. In the moments following the video, the storm destroyed the Schultz home, and Clarence resultingly found himself caught in a pile of rubble. All of a sudden, it kind of got quiet, he recalls. I asked myself, are you dead? No, you can't hurt when you're dead. And I hurt. Geraldine Schultz was oh. one of two deaths and 11 injuries that were caused by the events from April 9th. The other, Rest in peace. their neighbor and longtime friend named Jacqueline Closa. Closa reportedly had a massive fear of spiders, which her daughter claims is why she didn't seek refuge in her own basement. Damn. In total, over $19 million in damages were reported, and the aftermath footage embodies the devastation that was left behind. Thankfully, a storm of this magnitude hasn't struck the area since then. And after a grueling, years-long recovery effort, life in Fairdale is mostly back to normal today. For the residents of this small town, though, the scars from that night will remain everlasting. While the incident in Fairdale is just one of hundreds of natural disasters that have happened over the years, the resident stories and the media that accompany them paint a picture that is humbling. It takes you there, in a way, conveying the tragedy that nobody could have predicted. Today, Fairdale stands strong. They are a community that banded together, and while a similar storm hasn't happened since then, Damn. they remain vigilant fuck you mean, put in it, case put it something on like Town. this no ever happens. Yo, get the fuck out of here. This shit, yo, this shit is already paid for. Fuck. Y'all trying to hit Noble Dove Trap? That was 2015. 911, what are you Yeah, I'm paying, I'm paying, I'm paying. I got y'all, don't worry about it. Y'all ain't yeah, picking up the, 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 the goddamn thing. On December 1st, 2019, in Michigan, a man named Christopher Neal, his wife Haley Coe, and their two-year-old daughter Charlotte were watching TV at home. The family had just moved here from North Texas, so they were still getting settled what in. What year was that? No, 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 dead ass. What year was that? Hold on. On December 1st, 2019, in Michigan, a man named Christopher Neal, his oh, wife Haley Coe, and their two-year-old year. daughter Charlotte Dennis were watching TV at home. Oh my God, I was struggling. And the family fucking... had just moved here from yo, North Texas, so they were still getting some of them. Crazy All things mind. considered, the night Ten was going year. okay, and nothing was out of the ordinary. BRB about At to go around smoke 10 a p.m., the three hear a loud noise asshole. at the front of the house. It sounds like an intruder, and so Chris heads to investigate while Haley stays behind to call 911. It was at this point when Chris would encounter an unknown man standing near his front door, and immediately, he too calls the authorities. The following audio takes place the moment the call center answered. Nine one one. What is location of your emergency? Yes, there's a there's a man in my house right now. What is? Hold on, stop for a second. Whoa, well, right, there's a man in my house. I need you to give me your address first. Sixty three hundred Proctor Avenue. Is that a house, house or an apartment? House of the end of the street. Why are you in my house, bro? Tell me to talk to you. You don't get speaker phone. Why are you in my house, though? Sir, how many other people are in your house? It's me, my wife, and our daughter. How old is your daughter? She's two. Two? Okay. Do you have any idea who he is? We do not know. Let my wife come I, 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 I do okay. you know. I'm not going to harm you guys. All right? I promise. Send my hand. My name is Gordon Jones. You can go. I'm not going to you. Where is William at right now? He's standing next to me in my hallway. Okay. Are we still on speakerphone? We still are. He's right here. Okay. William! 
Yes, ma'am. William, okay. Can Christopher, can Christopher and his wife and daughter step outside? No. What? I'm not, ma'am? What? They're safe. They're safe? They're safe. They're okay. right here with you. What are you doing in their house? I told you there. Shots fired. Where were shots fired at? Going on, uh, uh, old 37, or uh, old Kentucky, uh, on Annabelle. What's that? Stop right here with me, man. No, I ain't going anywhere. You're going there with me, man. Bro, turn the light on, please. William. Turn the light on. William. Yes, ma'am. What do you, no. What are you trying to have them do? He's coming in the room with me. That's it. Why is he going in the room with you? Why are you locking that door? Don't lock that door, bro. You are right, man. I just gave you my word, man. You straight. I get, I get what you're saying, but you got two guns, bro. You got two guns? How can I put it crazy, man? I'm not doing anything. William. I'm not in my house, man. I'm sorry, man. William, listen to me. Why are you sitting here in the first place? William, can you listen to me? Yes, ma'am. I need you to put those guns down because I've got, I've got officers that want to help you. I have officers that want to help you and keep you safe, so I need you to put those guns down. Who are you, man? I'm 911. I've got help for you. I need you to put those guns down so that they can get you the help that you need. I want, I want police here. So I can leave. The police are there, William. The police are there. No, they're not. They are there. No, they're, I, they're there. I've got a lot of deputies there. Okay. Listen. I'm not harming you, I promise. My word. My wife just got threatened, man. I hear you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. They got threatened last night. Okay, I get you, bro. I'm not harming you, or your children, or your wife. William. Yes. Hey, this is Joe from the Sheriff's Department. How are you, man? Glad you bad for the new empty door. Don't come through that door. Okay. We're not going to come through the door, man, but I just want to talk to you and find out what's going on. Don't come through that door. Slide your bad underneath that door, man. Well, I'm not even up by the door, man. I'm outside the house. Where else? I'm in the house. Stop playing against me, man. What, what's, what's got you all worked up today, man? Contrary to the man's claim, Chris wasn't dead the moment he said it. Minutes later, though, he would be. Stars, thank you, bro. After hearing the gunfire, police forced their way into the home. During their advancement, three officers were shot in what sustained non life threatening wounds. Damn! Hey, what's your name, man? Hey, this is this is Joe out here, okay? Man, we don't want anything bad to happen. We're not gonna hurt you. Listen, listen to me, please. Go home. Try to get back when you need the door. Say that again, man. Once they charged towards the bedroom that Jones was hiding out in, they'd encounter Neil lying on the floor with the bedroom window ajar. Outside of it was Jones trying to flee. However, his efforts were in vain. William Jones ultimately faced 19 felony charges and was accused of killing Christopher Neal and wounding three officers. He was reportedly well known in surrounding counties as a thief and home invader. And astonishingly, just five days prior to the murder, he was released from jail after serving time for a previous offense. During his arraignment, his defense attorney maintained his innocence, claiming that Jones was running from an attacker that night and ultimately sought refuge in the Neal home. I think the 911 audio speaks for itself. However, it'll ultimately be up to a jury in his eventual trial. Since the incident, Haley Coe has given birth to the couple's second child and is now raising them alone. With this, 
their oldest daughter will be forever scarred by the loss of her dad that night. And their youngest will never know him. Damn, bro. Christopher Neal died protecting his family. Protecting his family from a lifelong criminal. Rest in peace, and no man. matter if Jones is sentenced to life in prison with justice served, the Neal family will forever have to live on without a husband and without a father. Coverage of a missing persons investigation is not a whole lot to go on, and that is why we need. Saturday evening, 1989. Central and North America are recovering from a recent Category 5 hurricane. United States President-elect George H.W. Bush is preparing to swear in as the 41st president with just under a week to go. And on Channel 5 up in Chicago, Illinois, an NBC-affiliated news station by the name of WMAQ is wrapping up its nightly programming. In relation to the other two, a news station broadcast keeping up the status quo doesn't seem all that notable or interesting. And to be honest with you, it isn't. Chad opinions on George Rather, Bush. It's what transpired afterwards that's piqued my interest. Honest opinions, honest it's opinions. It's extremely Don't, subtle. Why, why would but hold after being discovered in relatively cat. recently, Pussies. the footage honest you're about opinions. to watch has opened the door to a mystery that's perplexed a small but growing corner of the internet. He did 9 11 with a lie. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry for laughing. Kyle Parker, thank this you for this. This is up. WMAQ TV, Channel 5, NBC Television in Chicago. We now leave the air and wish you a pleasant good morning. Tottenham, thank you. The Twitter community, we almost have 19,000 members. Make sure y'all go join that. Preach. It's a rarity that something as simple as a missing notice can fill me with such uneasiness. And I think it's because this TV spot is so obscure. This image is in Should I call that number right there? Hmm. I'm about to call it. Should I? Hmm. Curse, am I pussy if I don't call? I'm on some white people shit right now. You're right. You're right. Thank you for stop. Thank you for making me realize that. And I, it's like, bro, that's why I fuck with y'all, bro, because y'all always gonna let me know the real. Incredibly low quality, and there's preach, effectively preach, preach. nothing to compliment. Stan, thank you for the sub, bro. That's some no white people height, shit. You're right. You're right. Or age. No information. Yo, somebody about else where do it. Let me know what saying. happens. Somebody else no do it. No family contacts. No investigative progress reports. No voiceover to fill you in. Absolutely nothing. This just exists as a late night no, post broadcast no. info screen shown at a time when most viewers likely directed their attention elsewhere. All we're left with is the name Joanna Lopez, Damn. a poorly lit photo of her face and a now defunct phone number that's been found to lead to the youth division of the Chicago Police Department. <gasps> Something about the way this was presented just seems off. And considering the current yo, online discourse yo, about it, I'm not alone in feeling I this think, way. I don't know. Yo, YK Proxy, thank you for the uh, month. All right, y'all want my number? 470. You're watching NBC5, Chicago. <laughs> that okay, is very okay. difficult. Two years later, in 1991, WMAQ would once again wrap up their nightly broadcast. In a strikingly similar and almost random fashion, Joanna's missing notice would be played once more. What the fuck?
considering the blink and you'll miss it nature of the notice this time, it too fell on deaf ears. There was, again, no supporting info about her, no updates that might have cropped up in the prior two years, still no age, height, weight, nothing. Just this obscure photo with the word missing plastered on top of it. Given how long it was since the last update, combined with the implied lack of any progress in the search, it was beginning to seem that the chances of finding Joanna were dwindling as the days went by. And to date, not a single other update had ever come of this. Joanna Lopez has presumably Damn. never been found. In late 2020 and into 2021, Joanna's mysterious missing notice would finally be shared to Reddit. Two posts are known to have spearheaded the conversation, one by a Luke Inspire and another by a Chris Polygon. While Luke Inspire's came first, I wanted to focus on Chris's as this one prompted the most discussion. Simply titled, The Very Obscure Disappearance of Joanna Lopez. Their post in Unresolved Mysteries outlines most of what we've already touched on so far. They go forth to claim that they've looked through various missing persons resources, however have found absolutely no information about her. Considering this is a subreddit devoted to discussing the unsolved, others quickly chimed in with theories on what they think might have happened. I think she was a runaway and was found pretty quick. Maybe she ran away again in 1991 and they used the same picture. 1989 and 1991 are not that far apart and if she was in foster care, I doubt they had up-to-date pictures of her. Such a strange case. Kimmy, thank you for the two Wow, months. this one is strange. I found the number listed here as the youth division of the Chicago Police Department. So on the face of it, the number is in fact legit. I don't have the guts to call it, but it's there. Sounds like she escaped some kind of juvenile detention or Dame probation. To the if it weren't for the reappearance of the photo two years later, I'd be inclined to believe that's exactly what happened. But then she was found and returned with her case never having a chance to escalate to federal involvement. The fact that it aired again in 1991, however, makes me think she was never found. And in the pre-internet days, her case simply slipped through the cracks. I hope I'm wrong. Throughout all of these though, one comment stood out among the others. Posted by a proud evening star, they claim the following. Came across this post late last night and it creeped me out so much that I couldn't sleep for a while. It really is so sad to think that a person can slip through the cracks like that and seemingly vanish altogether. I've been scouring the Doe network for unidentified Jane Doe's in and around the Chicago area all morning and the only possible case I could find is from 1994, here. I really hope we can find closure on this. My heart breaks for her. Interesting. Heading to that link presents us with a Jane Doe, 276 UFIL. She was found deceased in an alleyway, naked from the waist down. It goes without saying that our working evidence is tenuous. However, lining up this photo with that of Joanna Lopez, while considering the time and location in which she was found, postulating that this woman is Joanna isn't out of the realm of possibility. I've done some digging on various missing persons from around the time period and have also come up short with results. There are quite a few from around Illinois. However, their dates of discovery don't quite line up with the two missing broadcasts. It seems to me that Proud Evening Star has found the most plausible visual match out of nearly all the 1990s Jane Doe's from the area. But even this leaves us with much to be desired. At 
the end of the day, the case of Joanna Lopez is one that is undoubtedly haunting. Barring how obscure the photo itself is, the lack of information, the visuals that accompanied the broadcast, and the fact that there is virtually no discussion or record about her ever existing aside from this brief video archive online, this case is enveloped in absolute mystery. I implore you to join the discussion in finding this girl, and if you know or remember anything about her, myself and countless others are all ears about it. In the worst case scenario, we won't get anywhere and this mystery will remain. But the best the case, fuck I should go in the dark web, get the closure, fuck out of here. I'll never do that shit. That is what I'm aiming for. Fuck no. Free content? Bro, chat, I am so scared. The internet to go harbors a vast bro, abyss chat, of content so that is perplexing, web, intriguing, and immensely haunting. A community thriving off sharing. Yo. They got CCL footage of me on God. Bro, now I gotta go in there because now I gotta get that shit deleted, bro. On God, I gotta get that shit going. Bro, link it, bro. Link it. Yo, yo, cord up, link it. Derelict areas around the world. An internet urban legend that engulfed the name of someone who has never been found. An unforeseen natural disaster that wreaked havoc on a community. A 911 call in the midst of a home invasion. And a missing persons broadcast that never found a resolution. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special Halloween edition Damn. of Disturbing Things hey, from Around the happy Internet. Halloween, my boy. I hope you all enjoyed this, and if you have any eerie discoveries that you'd like to share for a future installment, feel free to fill out my new tip line 